Hey everybody, I want to introduce to you uh, Kia Fowler. She is the wife of Will Fowler, who is the founding pastor of the church that meets in our building every Sunday afternoon. But uh, you probably shouldn't think of her as pastor's wife because she is um, basically pastor two in the church. And so I want to start by asking her to introduce herself to us a little bit. <coughs> Kia, thanks for joining us. Would you just introduce yourself a little bit to us, explain a little bit about your ministry and your involvement in it? I am Kia Fowler, wife of William Fowler, pastor of Love Life International Ministries. Um, I am a pastor's wife. I am not a pastor. I am just his helper. I preach from time to time. I teach. I am the sound person. I am the cleaning crew. I pick up the pieces that fall by the wayside. So anything that he needs to help the ministry run smoothly, I am there to help with that. Is there a favorite part of that ministry that you're involved in right now? Um, I really enjoy the women in our in our ministry. Our ministry is mostly women, and I enjoy the women of our ministry. So when we can come together and just be women and talk about, you know, God and life and children and husbands and all of that without the presence of those children or husbands, that's always a good time. <laughs> Now, you're always kind to Will behind his back, right? Usually. Usually. All right. Usually. So um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about your spiritual life and how 2020 has affected your spiritual growth. So let's start before 2020. Okay. And share with me just a little bit about how you would describe your spiritual life before 2020. Before 2020, um, I did Bible study um, usually about once a week. I read uh, three to four days a week my word. Um, I listen to a lot of spiritual music, uplifting, I don't know what you call Christian, gospel, whatever label you want to put on it. Um, and so I worship a lot. And then I came to church on Sunday and started all over again. But 2020 kind of changed that a bit, hmm. I guess, because not being able to when they shut down the country, us not being able to come together kind of puts you in a different type of mood because you're not used to not being around people. And it, the people in your household, yes, okay, but after a while they tend to drive you crazy and you want to go somewhere else and be around other people and you can't. And so um, at one point in the year it made me, um, it made me more focus more on God. It made me go to my word more. It made me pray more. And then in other parts of the year, it made me more distant to God. So in those moments when I did go to pray, I would just hear him say, but you're leaving, come back. And so I would go back and I would pick up my Bible and I would read and I would try to study, but you know, it was just different. It was just different. So for you, the three things that are the the biggest impacts on your spiritual life are reading the Bible, praying, and listening to music? Yes. W when you listen to music, do you sing along? I do. Do you dance along? I do. All right. <laughs> so it's not just it's, it's not, not just passive listening. No, it is a whole experience. And for me and anybody that is around, I have had people at the stoplight see me dancing in my car, and they just join in, and they don't even know what I'm listening to. They, they, but they join in in their other cars. Yes, they do. All right. And I enjoy it. <laughs> so, um, so you said that during 2020, though, mm -hmm. you went through these, like, it sounded to me like you were saying you went through these ups, ups and, downs, and downs. Yeah. Where sometimes you were in the zone, mm -hmm. sometimes. Not so much. Just one. Mm -hmm. um, what about the people around you? Um, describe, let's talk about your church, the mm -hmm. ladies that you meet with in the mm -hmm. church or other relationships that you have with people in the church. Uh, how would you describe the spiritual health, spiritual life of the people in your church before 2020? Before 2020, I think um, we were growing and spiritually. Um, people were thirsting more for God. You can see them want to know more. You could hear the questions that they ask. Um, after our service, my husband always holds like a question session where if it's anything um, dealing with the sermon or the scriptures that we have gone over that you have a question about, you can ask. And so you could hear um, 
in their questions how they were trying to learn more and grow more and become closer with God. And then um, even the when Bible study stopped and um, the meeting stopped, we didn't completely like stop, but what happened was you began to see it just dwindle because people were afraid to come outside. And so um, I feel that it kind of stunted the growth spiritually of our ministry because people just, I think you learn better in an environment where it's not just your perspective. You know, you can hear other people's thoughts and their views on certain things. And so when we're learning, you know, you would hear, oh, I never thought of it like that. I didn't I didn't think he was saying it like that. And it's not just coming from the pastor, but it's coming from lay members in the in the congregation. And so, you know, I feel like. 2020 kind of stunted that growth because you don't get the input that you are used to and then people begin to go back to what is comfortable for them, what they know, and it's like, okay, well, you know, I was doing okay when I wasn't reading the Bible, so maybe I don't read this week or mm. maybe maybe I, I pray when I need something and it's not like just a relationship builder between me and God, but it's just, hey, God, you see I need this, you see my bills are due, can you help me type situation. And so now coming out of that, we're trying to grow back the relationship portion of the relationship with our, with our God because, you know, just like naturally you build relationships with people, you have to build that relationship with God so that you can learn to trust him no matter what's going on because that's kind of what got me through those low times. It's just like, okay, well, when I was going through things, my trust in him carried me through those low moments to come on back up. Now, you said that as a church, you would do um, Sunday, you'd do Sunday church mm -hmm. that would involve a question and answer time. Mm -hmm. And then you also said that you did a, a Bible study. When was the Bible study? Usually on Fridays because my husband doesn't work Friday. So we would, a group of us would meet at the house and we would just go over whatever scripture he was teaching on. And then we would sit there sometimes to midnight. Some people would stay till like midnight, one o'clock in the morning, just talking about scripture and Bible and how it affects us and mm. how we take it and make it, make sense in our day-to-day -day lives so so that sounds like before 2020 you were developing a, a real community of hungry people mm -hmm. uh, people who were hungry for the word of God they were digging into it mm -hmm. they were uh, interacting on Sundays but then also on Fridays mm -hmm. I imagine that must have felt really vibrant it did and our prayer we have a prayer line as well we had a prayer on Monday Wednesday Friday before COVID and after COVID, he started every day. So we are on every day, but it's not, our core group is about, just about on every day, but it's not the, the group that we had before COVID. That were coming on and actively praying, like everyone has a time to pray. Um, so if you feel like you need to pray, you just hop in and you pray. And so we would see people come in and they would come in and say their prayers and the, the involvement was more than mm. it is now. We're growing again. <laughs> I can say that. I see more than just myself and my husband and um, Tamika and Sister Shirley and Sister Angel. It's now more of a few other members of the church and a couple people out of the community that we have told, hey, you know, if you want to get on prayer, we, we're here every day at six o'clock. Join us. So before COVID, it was Sunday and Friday, but during the time of COVID, you lost a couple things. Mm -hmm. The Bible study went away. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning went away for, or Sunday afternoon went away for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But prayer hit every day. Every day. Okay. And so that shifted your dynamic. Completely. Completely as mm -hmm. to what you were doing for spiritual growth. Yes. Uh, are you still doing prayer every day? Every night at six o'clock. And are you uh, still, uh, have you started the Bible studies up again? No. Um, right now, I don't. I don't, I don't know when he plans on starting it back up, but we have, like, I do a personal Bible study, um, and a couple of the women in the ministry join me, um, but other than that, no, we don't do Bible study right now either. What does Sunday look like now? 
<laughs> Sunday is different. It's not as vibrant. Um, you don't get the energy. You know when you do praise and worship and you have 15, 20 people out versus 30 or 50 people, the, the feeling is different. You know, you have, it's, it's just different. Mm -hmm. But um, God still meets us. The spirit is still here. And so I'm thankful for that. But it's just different for the people, I think. Um, we have some that come faithfully every Sunday. We have some that show up a Sunday here, a Sunday there. Um, but they still come a couple times a month. And then we have some that show up every blue moon. So, yeah, it's a bit different. And it's it's kind of heartbreaking because you're like, God, I saw so much growth in this person. And you see them, um, how the growth kind of stunning and it reverted them back. And you're just praying that God, like, grabs them and pulls them back where they were so that they can continue to go higher in him and not get stuck in a place of complacency. Let's go with that a little bit. You said that you saw some people that kind of slid back. Mm -hmm. um, in general terms, in your church, mm -hmm. over this last year, 2020, did people grow? That's a loaded question because for some, yes. For some, seeing everything that happened and COVID affecting them has completely made them dependent upon the Lord. Um, I think the alone time gave them time to reevaluate, self-evaluate, and see the things that they needed to work on or they needed help from God from. And so they began to pray and seek him for those things. And others, that time away from the community, the, the church community, kind of pushed them back into whatever they were in before. And so we have a lot of people that... Um, that have come into our ministry um, out of need because, you know, you got into some trouble or whatever and you need a little bit of help. And so they come in looking for the help and we help and some stay and some don't. And the ones that stayed, I see some of them kind of revert back instead of pushing through I don't know if it's a disconnect, like we try to show everybody like God lives within you. And so just like I can talk to him, you can talk to him and he'll answer. You just have to listen. And I think a lot of times either you don't like what you're hearing because you really want to do the things that he's telling you not to do or you're not quiet enough to hear, hmm. to be guided. So let's think about yourself mm -hmm. and just a person that you know who grew spiritually mm -hmm. and a person that you know who kind of slid backwards. Mm -hmm. um, what made the difference between a person who grew this last year and a person who didn't? Um, I would have to say the thirst. Like you have to want this life. You have to know beyond a doubt that this is what you want. And because the things that you really want, that you long for in your heart, you go after. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a job or it's a mate or whatever, if it's an inanimate object that you know, okay, I have to save for in order to get because I can't afford it now, but I can get it if I save uh, $100 a month or whatever, give me a couple months and I'll be able to get it. It's the same thing with this life. You have to know that this is what you want so that the things that you need to do to seek God, because you have to genuinely seek him in your own time. I can't seek him for you. You know, I can't flourish the relationship between you and God. You have to build that. And so for the ones that genuinely wanted change and not just um, enjoyed the idea of change, I see the growth. And the ones that want, wanted the change because they knew they needed it but didn't want to do the work for it, I see the fallback. Interesting, because I think a lot of times when we have church, mm -hmm. the more vibrant the church is, 
the more we can fool ourselves into thinking we're growing spiritually mm -hmm. because we're not doing the work, mm -hmm. right? The work is being done for us. Mm -hmm. But what I'm hearing you say is that um, when you don't have the work being done for you, mm -hmm. um, as if that would ever work anyway, when you don't have the work being done for you, you have to want it. Yes. So the thirst, the thirst. for God, the thirst for spiritual growth mm -hmm. is the thing that sets a grower apart from a slider. Yes, I believe. Um, and it's because I've been in both places. Hmm. I've been one that being around the people kind of makes you feel like you do all of the things that you see them do. Um, in front of them but in the private moments maybe you don't read as the way that you should you don't study the word tells us study to show thyself approved well if you're studying but I'm not studying but I read it real quick before we begin to talk about it it looks like I studied but I really didn't study mm -hmm. and so you know when it's time for the test you're gonna pass but I'm gonna fail because I didn't study and so in those moments you know, you revert back to what you know. And I tell people all the time, like, it's, it's nothing wrong with falling because we're all going to fall sometimes. The only problem in falling is when you become um, okay with wallowing in wherever you fail. You know, you have to be okay with failing in order to achieve a greater goal. You're not going to as, look at babies, they don't come out of the womb walking. When they begin to walk, they take a step, they teeter, and then they fall. But they get up and they start all over again. We have to realize, realize that in this walk, it's the same thing. You, you're you going to teeter, you might fall, but you got to get it back up and try again. Because no matter what, um, our journey is not just for us. So we have to realize that those times when we fall, we got to be strong enough to tell somebody, okay, I fell. And this is how God helped me up. This is what, these are the steps that he gave me in order to get back up and get back on the right path. Because that one little conversation may save somebody's soul in the next round. Mm -hmm. So I try to. <laughs> I like that. That's encouraging. Um, so let's talk about March 2020, okay. um, the Kia back then. <laughs> if, if you could go back to March 2020 and talk to Kia back then, what would you say to her? Don't be so comfortable. I was comfortable in life. I was comfortable um, in my marriage. I was comfortable with our financial situation. I was comfortable with our church. I was just comfortable. And in comfort, you cannot grow. You have to get uncomfortable in order to grow. It's not, growth is not a comfortable situation. Like, it's, it's uncomfortable. Like, when you have a growth spurt, you have aches in your knees, you know, your ankles might hurt, whatever. Same thing when, when God is about to bless, you hit a dark spot that you feel like it's dark, but it's really not dark. It's just a place of uncomfortability. Like we don't know what's on the other side of the darkness. So it's kind of like fear. And are you going to let the fear stop you or are you going to let it push you into whatever God has for you next? And so I would tell me, don't allow fear to stagnate your growth. That's a good word. Um, this last year, were you comfortable? No. <laughs> no, I was not. Um, it was a perfect opportunity for growth. Yes, and I'm still growing, and I'm still learning from the things that we experienced, even from March to December. Like, I'm still learning how to deal with the new set of emotions that come with the things that change of life because life has drastically changed for our family. We lost three key family members from COVID. And so we had to find a new family dynamic to live without those people. And the emotion that comes from that lost, not only that, but you know, the emotion from 
um, being unsure about job situations and do you really trust God or is your job your source? Like those are the type of questions that I had to ask me in order to grow from the things that we were experiencing because you, we didn't know what life was going to be like on the other side. We haven't made it to the other side, even as a country, but as a community even, you know, we still have high numbers. We still have people getting sick. We still have people that are not working because of it. So we still have growth to do. So as leaders of the church, I feel we have to get the foundation of being okay with being uncomfortable for a moment in order to be able to teach others that it's okay to be uncomfortable so that they can embrace their growth. We have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Yes, first. And embrace our growth mm -hmm. so that we can help others do the same. Yes, isn't that what Christ did? I, I think he <laughs> I think he did, yes. I, I believe, you know, I read something about a very <laughs> uncomfortable situation. <laughs> <laughs> and something along the lines of take up your cross uh, or, and follow me. Or if it's your will, take this <laughs> cup from me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, in those moments, because I, I had a moment, like, when I got sick, I was like, okay, Lord, is this my time? Because... I don't think I'm quite ready yet. And, you know, he reassured me like, no, you won't perish from this, but you will learn. Mm. And I was like, hmm. ah, there goes that growth again. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you just have to, you have to be prepared to be uncomfortable because that's the only way growth is, in, is flourish, is able to flourish. So compare yourself to... 18 months ago. Have you grown? Yes. Yes, but I also have been, um, the veil has been lifted from my eyes where I can see areas where there is still much growth needed in me. So what are your plans moving forward? As you look ahead, um, is it your goal to get back to 2019 as soon as possible? No. What is, what is ahead of you? What are your plans moving forward for yourself first and, and then also for the ministry? For, the ministry? for me, um, I was taught a long time ago, never look back because you cannot fix what has already been done. The only thing you can do is take that lesson and prepare for what is next to come. So I don't want to go back to 2019. Um, but I do want to be better than I was going from 2019 into 2020. So I have to literally evaluate Kia so that I can make sure that I am not complacent in the areas that I am comfortable in. And I am, I am okay saying I'm not okay in this area. You know, I fall short in this area or, um, being vulnerable to someone who is willing to help me spiritually. I'm not saying go tell everybody like, hey, I'm falling short now. Cause you know, you'll have some people that's like, okay, come on, let's go fall short together. <laughs> so, but you want to find people that are going to help you move past that in a healthy way. You know, you don't want to be around like-minded people in bad situations. So you're kind of, uh, the veil's been lifted for you, not only in your own life, but in the people around you. Yes. And so then let's talk about the ministry. What are, what are you going to do for those ladies in the church to try to help them get the most out of 2020 that they can? For beginners, um, I am going to be a beacon of positivity. No matter what the situation is, no matter how bad it looks, I will find the good in it because darkness and light cannot live in the same vessel. So if I'm going to be the light, be the light. And so from this point on, you know, when negativity begins to come up, I will immediately cut it off and, you know, peacefully tell them that, you know, you can't dwell on the bad and expect good because you are attracting what you're, you power, 
the power of life and death lies in your tongue. So everything that you speak, you are pulling back towards you. Mm. So all this negativity, negativity that you're speaking, you're pulling it into your life and then you're like, God, well, where's all this negativity coming from? You're bringing it to yourself. Mm. So you have to learn to stop right in the midst of it. I don't care how bad it is. If you got to cry, cry. But in the midst of the crying, find something good in the situation. Every situation has something good. Even with death, yes, death hurts. We don't want to see people go. But the positive of it is they're no longer hurting. Mm -hmm. They're no longer suffering. You don't have to watch them suffer. So if that's the only positive thing you can pull out of it, guess what? Take that and hold on to it and go forth with that. So my promise to our ministry right now is that we will hold on to positivity by any means necessary <laughs> so that um, when we are in the midst of whatever storm may be the next one coming, we'll be able to hold the positive umbrella over us while we walk through the storm. Not to mention, if we're serving a good king, huh. we should be able to trust that he's up to something good. Well, you know what? That's a whole nother story. Trust. You know, a lot of times I learned in 2020, I didn't trust God the way I thought I did. I learned that. And I feel it is the same for a lot of people in our ministry. We say we trust him with our mouth, but our actions show that every time we have to bear it all and put it at his feet and walk away, we can give it to him. But we always go back and pick up a little piece of it to try to mm. fix it. Mm. And so we have to learn to trust. And that starts with reading and getting to know who he is for yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so final word. Okay. Um, I know you don't know the people of LCC all that well. Mm -hmm. And they don't know you all that well. Mm -hmm. But you know we're trying to follow Jesus together. Yes, we are. Um, and so you, you got a sense of who we're trying to be at least. I do. So tell the people who are watching this video, um, what is the most important thing on your heart these days? What is the thing that coming out of 2020, the thing that God has settled on to you, the thing that is, is a burden on you, the thing that you find to be the most important thing that we're carrying forward, how would you, how would you want to encourage the people? of LCC. Don't stop being good to other people. Plain and simple. Treat all people, no matter whether they are clean or dirty, brown or not, whatever. Treat them like you would want them to treat you. So be good to everyone and allow God to sort it out. Mm. That's a challenging word. Yes, it is. Because a lot of us want to solve people's problems. And you cannot. Because you're not the savior. <laughs> now that's I, a good word. Because I'm glad I'm not the savior. <laughs> yes. I had a, a good man tell me one time. You are not their savior. You can't save them from all of their problems. And that resonated in my spirit for months. And it made me, every time I got ready to fix something. It made me say, nope, let me just back up because all I do is put stress on me trying to fix your stuff. So you can't fix it, but you do what you can to help. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Well, I want to thank you for sharing that. That was an encouraging word <laughs> to me. You. And um, everybody, thank you for joining us for this video. Kia, thank you for sharing your heart with us. Thank you for having um, me. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing to me to hear you talk about the experience that you've had. It's uh, in many ways similar to my own, but different as mm -hmm. well, and it's encouraging to me. I hope those words were an encouragement to you too, so thanks for participating in this video with us, and God bless you. <laughs>